This is Sean Duby, Technical Director with Windows IT Pro Magazine, and this short video is a walkthrough of my Replication Troubleshooting Flowchart, which is part of my Active Directory Troubleshooting Flowchart, at the URL below. You enter the Replication Troubleshooting Flowchart from some other area, uh, from another page, that branches in uh, because you're experiencing replication issues. One of the first things that you have happening is by the time you get to the replication flowchart, uh, it assumes that your physical and network and local errors will already have been checked at this point. So you know that it's not because you don't have network connectivity, for example. However, <clears throat> it's a good idea to do a quick operating system check. In other words, look in the system log, just kind of eyeball the system to make sure that everything is operating as you expect it is. Uh, you need to make sure that all of your fundamentals are right. So if you are getting any serious errors uh, in the system log, then you need to branch off and go pay attention to those and try to resolve your, the server operating systems issues that may have nothing to do with Active Directory at all. So assuming that that's okay, that the general operating system appears to be healthy, the next place that you want to go to is look in the directory service log for errors. At least that's what I do, and see what kind of errors are being generated, if any. Um, we're assuming that you're probably going to see some. Looking at the errors, errors in general will give you a general sense of what the problem might be, but the thing to really do if you're getting many errors is to simply open a command prompt uh, and a command prompt in administrative mode and run dcdiag all by itself no, no operands just dcdiag you can get a uh, pretty thorough description of all of the different tests the tests that dcdiag runs at that at the url that i have in there which is bit.ly 4 ue d is in delta z is in zebra 9 good little reference point if you want to learn a little bit more about what DC Diag is doing. So you've run it and you get some output from it. Did it fail any of the primary tests? In other words, the tests that it runs when you don't give it any commands at all. Let's assume that the answer is yes um, and, and it has failed one test or, or other um, from the primary test. So the next step to do is to run to, is to go back to that particular failed test and run it in verbose mode to get more information out of it. So to do that, you simply add the switch. So you say uh, dcdiag forward slash test colon and then enter the test name and then forward slash v for verbose uh, and it will generate a lot of information to give you a lot more information about that particular problem uh, and, and to help you correct the problem. Now if that uh, didn't fix the problem, and you'll notice that coming from uh, the top branch, even if it didn't fail any primary tests, uh, I am suggesting that you run uh, the DC Diag's uh, DNS test anyway, because that is such a common uh, place for problems to occur. To occur, uh, it's good to run this just to be sure that everything is straight. So what you do is you run, again, using the similar syntax, you run dcdiag forward slash test colon dns space forward slash v for verbose. And it will generate a lot of information, like I said earlier in the presentation, pipe it out to a log so you can examine it a little more um, in a little more ordered fashion than scrolling through a, a, a command prompt window. And work on correcting those errors, those DNS related errors. If that fixed the problem, you jump straight to uh, the end, jump straight to the end, pass go, collect two hundred dollars, all that sort of good stuff. If that didn't solve the problem, then go back and look and see if the source DC is in a different site than the target DC. So, what we're now moving into is looking at the site topology a little bit. Uh, so, what you were going to do, is, what you need to do, is verify the site topology. Are all the sites connected by site links? Do you have site link bridging disabled or has someone added a manual site link that is, um, has changed the replication pathways? And to do this, you can run a DC Diag test called topology. So DC Diag forward slash test colon topology to check your site topology to make sure 
that uh, you have full connectivity uh, in your, uh, across your Active Directory forest and its sites. The other possibility is that the time that is elapsed between when you fix the problem and, um, and, and the DCs in another site is that it's less than the site link interval. In other words, the uh, interval upon which replication occurs between the sites. And if you're an impatient person like I am, you probably want to trigger it by hand. So what you do is, if you get a yes there, is you can manually trigger replication with the failed partner. You can do it two ways. The first, you can use, say rep admin forward slash replicate uh, to replicate with a single partner. And the syntax is a little more complicated than that. You have to indicate the source partner, the destination partner, and the partition you wish to replicate. Or if you don't have a huge replication topology, you could do it the shotgun approach and just say rep admin sync all. Uh, run, it, run, on, run on the domain controller in question, it will synchronize with all of its partners rather than just a, rather than just a single partner and a single partition. So if that, if that fixed the problem, jump to the end. If that did not fix the problem, Let's go on and look at maybe are you getting access denied errors. Access denied errors are almost always associated with Kerberos because of a time skew or some other problem with authentication. Access denied is authentication. Authentication is Kerberos. If you're not getting that, then maybe you want to check the source domain controller. In other words, it, maybe it's not just your target domain controller that's have, that is having the problem. Maybe the problem is coming from the source. So you want to check to see if any other domain controllers are not getting updates from the source domain controller. If that's the case, you need to go back and check with the source domain controller to make sure that it's healthy as well. If that fixed the problem, great. If that didn't fix the problem on the source uh, domain controllers, source domain controller, um, go take a look at uh, the source domain controller's DNS configuration. It's possible that it has something incorrectly registered in DNS that is preventing uh, replication from occurring correctly. If not, we're down to the end of the, the fairly easy replication troubleshooting and we get into some fairly advanced topics which are beyond the scope of this uh, replication flowchart. So that's the flowchart as it exists today. Uh, I'm uh, update. I try to update it on a fairly regular basis. Sometimes I don't succeed so well, but uh, I will make sure to post updates to the AD troubleshooting blog when I do make updates to the flowchart, and you know you'll see an update in the version number, and all that sort of good thing.